Today, we'll be creating this wonderful hummingbird sculpture in polymer clay. It requires an armature, so we'll be covering that, and our sculpture will be painted in a future lesson. We had a ton of fun creating this sculpture, so let's get into it. For this project, we'll be using a 400 gram block of beige polymer clay, a 20 centimetre round canvas, a bag of plaster and mixing bowl, a latex glove, a 3 16th booker rod with matching nuts and a washer. We'll also need a coat hanger, some tie wire, clear tape, some flat nose pliers, a hobby knife and an assortment of modelling tools. We will also be using a banding wheel, some dividers and a clay press, although these are not compulsory. A plate will substitute for a banding wheel, measurements can be transferred with a ruler and clay can be conditioned and flattened with a rolling pin. For the base, we'll be using a small round canvas and embedding the booker rod into the centre. Place a nut and washer onto the booker rod and we can then mix up our plaster. A good mix is two parts plaster to one part water. A tip with plaster is to always pour the plaster into the water and use latex gloves to mix the plaster. Place the base and armature on the edge of the table upside down and pour in the plaster. Ensure the booker rod is at the correct angle and allow it to dry. This will take approximately two days. Next we fashion a length of wire from that coat hanger and bend it at the top, then bind it onto the rod with tie wire. Twist the wire with snub nose pliers so it's nice and tight. Add a few more ties up the wire, then wrap a length of wire around the booker rod and coat hanger wire. Next, cut the coat hanger, leaving enough length. We will refer to this as the body wire. Refer to the views in the plans for this. The wings can be created by bending a length of tie wire around the body. This lies around the central part of the body wire. Each end can then be folded back on themselves. We then wrap more tie wire around the body wire and onto the wing so there is no slop. We then take the wire back down the body for reinforcement and create the tail. The wire part of our skeleton on our hummingbird is done now, so we can use some alfoil to pack out the body, squeeze it into shape and wrap it tightly with clear tape. A note of caution here to ensure the armature fits within the outer profile of the bird. Tape can then be wrapped around those wings. We can now add the clay. To do this, we're using a clay press, but as we said, you, if you don't have a clay press, you can use a rolling pin. Just place the clay in between the alfoil before you press it. We want the clay to be approximately five millimeters thick. The clay can then be wrapped around our armature. We can start with the top. Lay the clay over the armature and use a hobby knife to cut away the excess, then repeat this on the bottom side. We can then bring the edges together and blend them smooth. I have found one of the most useful tools is the end of a paintbrush. It's great for smoothing joins and rolling areas flat. At this stage, we can refine the shape by adding and removing the clay until it looks right. Once we have the body to a stage we're happy with, we can wrap clay around the wing and then trim away the excess on each wing. Then bring the wing into the body. Once the wings, tail and body are the correct shape, we use a pin tool to mark up the eye positioning and then use various tools to lay in the concave shape in the orbital region of the head. We then push a ball of clay in for the eye.
Once the eyes are in, we can mark up the wing. We mark in the covert area and then the primaries. We can then shape the end of the primary feathers by snipping the corner off each feather and then smoothing them off. We then lay a thin sheet over the covert area of the wing and carefully cut it to shape on the front and rear. Blend the edge and then smooth it out into the body. Repeat for the other wing. While you're here, take a look around the Create section on our site and uncover a whole heap of free stuff from free projects, handy tips and tricks and techniques to keep you busy. Hummingbirds have tiny little feet and, as a matter of interest, don't have knees, so they can't walk or hop. To create the cute little feet, create three little tubes and press them onto the bottom of the bird in the correct position and blend them from the rear. The last step for the bird is to suggest the fine plumage with that pin tool. Start from the head and work down the body. Add diagonal strokes for the tail feathers. We can now work on that branch. Create a long sheet approximately 5mm thick and wrap it around the booker rod and cut away the excess. To add some buds onto our branch, we wrap tie wire onto the booker rod and twist it back onto itself. We can then pack clay onto the wire supports and form the clay into bud shapes. Next, create a series of petal shapes by flattening out balls of clay. We then add them in flower shapes onto the branch. To create leaves, Create crescent shapes and mark up the midrib and veins and apply them to the branch. We can now bake our hummingbird for 45 minutes at 130 degrees or 266 degrees Fahrenheit on the fan forced setting. A good tip is after the project is baked, turn the oven off and let it cool down slowly. This can minimise the chance of any fine cracks forming due to shrinkage from rapid cooling. And voila. Well, thanks for watching. We hope you're inspired to grab some polymer clay and create your own hummingbird sculpture. Otherwise, have fun, keep creating, and we'll see you in the next one.